Steve, where are we now with consensus? How close is consensus to your 1.50% call on the U.S. 10-year? Yeah, the, the last time I checked on the Bloomberg consensus was that it was uh, crashing lower. Uh, so uh, back in the fourth quarter of last year, the consensus for 10-year Treasuries was about 3.3. And the last I saw, it was nearer to 2.6. It, it might well be lower after today's right. uh, move or the move from last night. And uh, so, so the, the, the spot yield level is pulling down the consensus. There's no doubt about it. What has changed is your research note was a structural and economic call. There's a lot of other noise yeah. now. Describe that noise. Yeah, yeah. Now, our view has always been much more structural. You're right there. And it's been focused on the global interlinkages. Uh, uh, I think that was an, another key key pillar to our view. Um, more recently, the challenge to that view has come from the, the traditional cyclical, domestically orientated data like wages. And so, and so there are some, some uh, very well respected economists out there calling for, for higher inflation and pointing at wages in both the US and UK, in fact. And we have to respect that. But the question is, is that the dominant factor? To, to me, the, the global interlinkages are, uh, and the debt overhang are the ones that really matter. Mm -hmm. And if you look through this year, I think it's very difficult to imagine rates going up um, much at all in the US. But Steve, where do you find value? So, you know, yeah. the, we know about treasuries, Japanese, Australian bonds also gaining. Yeah. Where do you make money? Well, this benign outlook for rates, because it is benign, uh, nobody thinks rates are going to go up in, in Europe, um, certainly not in the Nordic countries. Uh, Japan, uh, rates are going to go down. So all those places have got benign rate outlooks, e even lower rates. The U.S. is in the process of capitulating away from previous uh, uh, hiking yeah. views. So actually, with a benign outlook for rates, you have to look for picking up yield, and, and that's good for credit. It's been very good for U.S. investment-grade credit, for example. Buying good quality companies with some spread seems to be a good trade. In, in Europe, it might actually favor equities more. Right. especially as the ECB uh, pushes more to supporting companies and the financial sector. So, so there are opportunities, but it's not, it's not clear to me that you're going to get it from big outright, outright duration views. Um, in terms of yield curves, they tend to get very flat from the front right. out and sit very steep in the 10-year plus. So that there are trades to do, to do yes. Um, and what's the linkage between treasuries and wage growth and, and, yeah. the, and the dollar in the U.S.? Well, if, you, if you took the U.S. as a closed economy and you looked at the inflation data, well, most of it has a number near to 2%. So on a literal interpretation of the, all the various inflation prints, whether they be core or headline, PCE, whatever, CPI, most of them have been trending up. Right. And, and there is a move in real wages as well. The question is, will it still be there in three to six months' time? Uh, probably not if, if the global forces and more structural ones come through, uh, as we would expect. So... Stephen, you know, I, I want to ask a more philosophical question here with your courageous call on lower uh, rates. You yeah. took a lot of grief when you made the call. Are our central bankers working with a complex, modern mathiness to their hopes, as we heard Chair Yellen say the word hope yeah. a couple of times yesterday, in a period that needs a more simple economic analysis, which is rates are low, do something? Yeah, I think I think you're right. And every couple of decades or so, exactly. there is there, there is an iterative shift in, in central bank thinking. It was only 1989, by the way, that the uh, New Zealand central bank started to target inflation. The Fed was only targeting rates in 1994 and onwards. So every 20 years ago or so, things start changing. I'm not arguing for a big bang but I would respect the fact that there are iterative shifts uh, going on. And one of those, I would say, is that very quietly it's being recognized that the role of low and negative rates, and, and by the way, negative real rates just about everywhere, that is part of the deleveraging process. Right.